Eden Hazard wants clarity over the Chelsea manager future. And Galo Kante potentially set for a move to PSG. Could the deal for Maurizio Sarri be back on? And is Florenzi coming to Chelsea? Find out in today's Transfer Show. Chelsea! 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 What's going on, guys? Welcome back to 100% Chelsea. And welcome to your transfer daily. Every single day, transfers, as it says, does what it does on the says on the tin. Yeah, I basically just drew out what it is. Transfer daily. But yeah, as you can see, it's me, Louis. I am back to give your news for today. Lawrence wanted to do a couple of days stints because he wanted to have uh, today off. So uh, yeah, pretty much. You're stuck with me today, unfortunately. Uh, Lawrence will be returning tomorrow. But let's get straight into the news. And surprisingly, there's something to talk about other than the manager of Marigo around. But first, we're going to talk about the manager of Marigo around. Let's talk a little about Eden Hazard's comments. So Eden Hazard has come out during one of his Belgian press conferences and said that obviously he's been very disappointed with the season that Chelsea have had. Basically saying, look, we won the FA Cup. It's put paper in over the cracks and it's not what any of us want. Uh, so fair play to him for saying that. That's actually nice to hear someone say that for a change rather than saying, oh, you know, it's, we won the FA Cup. We're no trophy. It's all good. Did paper over the cracks. And what he's saying is, before he comes back, he wants to find out who the manager is. Is it going to be Antonio Conte then in his position, or is it going to be Maurizio Sarri? But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what he said. He said, if we have someone, something new, manager or players, it's always good to know it because I want players that can help bring us success back to Chelsea next season. But to be fair, the transfer market is not here in full flow yet. We will see afterwards. Obviously, with the World Cup uh, coming, coming, obviously, it's now... Literally four days away, which is absolutely insane. Really looking forward to it. I think all of us are. Uh, we're bringing you uh, a new show throughout the, throughout the World Cup. Uh, Ian's going to be doing that. Craig 28 if you want to go check him out. Um, but yeah, look, basically, Eden Hazard, there was a lot of talk about his potential future. Um, and understandably so. Look, realistically, we have been... Uh, no, well, not realistically. We haven't been. We haven't been good uh, for the past year. And uh, Eden Hazard, obviously, he wants. He, he he seems pretty settled. He said that he was with the player which forced Chelsea players to go and walk up to us at Newcastle. He was pushing them out of the tunnel, saying, "You guys, say sorry." So he, he seems to care about the club. Obviously, this has all been reported from Sky Sports. Um, but yeah, look. Obviously, he said, "I I want to stay, but we need to compete." Um, so that means money's going to have to be pumped in. Where that money's going to come from at the minute, I don't have any idea. Is it going to be Roman pumping money in and not taking it back? Uh, obviously, there's the whole deal with the, the debt we owe him. If he does sell, who's going to take up that debt? Um, but yeah, look, it's, but for me, I think Eden Hazard makes the correct point. There are players which we're going to talk about in today's transfer, which I think could help us compete. Uh, they are some fantastic players, but it's a case of would we get them all? Probably not. Our past, past few dealings in the past few transfer windows have not been up to standard, in my opinion. I think Marina Gravaskaya uh, has not been the best of uh, <laughs> chief executives when it comes to getting deals over the line. Obviously, we had Peter Kenyon in the past and um, some other fantastic people dealing with our transfer business. But uh, since 2014, well, post the 2014 windows, our last World Cup, were absolutely fantastic in terms of business. Got Fabregas and Diego Costa in early, sealing uh, what would be uh, the final pieces of a title-winning squad. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. If Mauricio Sarri does come in, as it seems very, very likely, uh, he's going to want pieces to play his style of football, what he wants to do. And look, every manager has a style, and it seems like it's like he's likely to come in. Uh, how Eden Hazard will fit into that, obviously, there's been talk of him playing down the middle, a very Mertens-esque role. Obviously, Sarri does like faster strikers playing down the middle. But, you know, he's got his talk of potentially Gonzalo Higuain coming in as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how all of this develops. And uh, obviously the transfer window is a very key part of any club in terms of mounting a challenge. And for us, it's, I think it's remounting that challenge to deal with Europa League football, which is very, very strenuous, uh, and playing Premier League alongside it. Now, um, are we going to attract the calibre of players that we're after? Who knows? Is it is, who Eden Hazard is going to want to play next to? Possibly. But if you look at our previous 25 transfers, there's only been a couple of gems in there. Obviously, David Luiz had that superb season when he came back in. Um, but other than that, for me personally, nothing really physically sticks out off the top of my head right now. Uh, I've got a script and I hadn't put that in there, which probably would have made sense to have a chat about that. Um, but for me, I just think that it's uh, uh, we need to sign the players that Eden Hazard wants to play with if he is to remain at Chelsea. Uh, however, for me, if the correct offer came in for him, I would consider it. I don't think Eden Hazard has been uh, as pivotal this season as he has been in the past. And the talk of potential transfer fees uh, has kind of 
taken my attention. Um, you know, it's all well and good to build it all around one man, but obviously you have to bear in mind that this is a player that has to turn up every single week, a player that has to drag the team by the scruff of the neck. And there has been many occasions where he has done that this season, but there's been other occasions where he hasn't shown up. Um, you know, is this someone that we we want to build a team around, or is there potential for maybe a 125 million fee or something like that? That's what I consider anyway. Um, you know, if if the right money came along, would you take it? For me, yeah, I, I would. Um, it has to be the right fee. I like I'm saying, I'm saying 125 million up. That's probably what I would say. That's enough to reinvest into a squad and sign some good players to build a spine rather than just build it around one player. Uh, you can obviously build a spine as well, but it's going to be difficult to just do it and get it done. And obviously in today's transfer market, you've got the likes of FFP and very uh, many other um, fluctuations in the market, including obviously Transfer Value Rocketing after the name idea of last summer. Um, I've already said FFP and obviously contention with other clubs and all that kind of stuff who have more financial power than we do. Let's be honest, like right now we are not in a position to be spending as much money. Our net spend has gone down significantly over the past few years, obviously with Rona Branovich wanting us to be a lot more self-reliant. Um, we have been, but that also hinges very heavily on our business with our youth products when we loan them out and do all that kind of stuff. And I think it's it's a system that works, but long term it's going to be something which hinders us, as I keep saying, uh, in all the transfer shows. But Eden Hazard, look, if he was to remain at Chelsea, which he seems very keen to, he wants to almost use his, his power, which he does have. Player power is a thing in football now. Um, you know, we have to, I guess, if we want to keep him, bow to those wishes. If not... We've got to see uh, if an offer comes in for him, which we can consider. But obviously, this is me just looking at both sides of the story. I, personally, for me, obviously, I want to keep it, keep Eden Hazard, but trying to be a bit more neutral and just sort of look at both sides of the coin, really. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the next story. Obviously, leave your thoughts on the previous one. And PSG are interested in N'Golo Kante. It's been reported in multiple papers, including in the French media, and obviously here you've had <laughs> Metro. Uh, Roy, um, what I've got written here is... Look at the options. Okay, so I think for all of us, uh, it pretty much uh, it has been summarised in one tweet uh, from someone which I saw and I put up on screen now and it says, I value him at jog on million pounds. And I completely agree. And Galo Kante is the most pivotal player at Chelsea. He He's what makes us tick. He's this season, in my, in my opinion, been a personal saviour of ours, obviously taking us uh, and saving us at many opportunities when we haven't exactly uh, been at the races. Um, but Angolo Kante's overall uh, importance at Chelsea is, is second to none. Uh, and PSG obviously offering £80 million. Like I said, it's a fee. However, Angolo Kante, uh, I feel, is indispensable. Well, I'm not saying that, for example, I'm not saying that Eden Hazard isn't. I'm saying, like I said, Eden Hazard is incredibly important to Chelsea Football Club. Uh, he has been fantastic for us. He's been a fantastic sub. We, we have to bear in mind now, Hazard has been at the club for five years. So if a fee came in, you know, you can't really say, what the hell? You've got to kind of say, you know, five, six years of service. Hold your hands up. Look, thank you so much. Um, and if he does go out the door, he goes out the door. However, this is a different case for Ngolo Kante. Now, I'm not saying that the amount of time he's been at the club is playing a role in this. But what I am saying is that his overall crucial role in, in, in the team is so pivotal that it's worth more than 80 million euros to us as a club. Look, Chelsea Football Club right now, like I'm saying, have relied on N'Golo Kante for so long. He has been, for the past two seasons, the most important player at Chelsea. He's the reason we won the league the two seasons ago. And last season, he's the reason that we didn't finish lower than fifth, in my opinion. The amount of times that he saved us, his, his obviously engine-esque nature of being able to be everywhere at once, you know, it saw him help Leicester win the league and it saw us help us win the league. And, you know, like I keep saying, stopped us from going any further than fifth downwards. Um, 80 million euros is not a big enough fee. Uh, like the guy said, I value him at jog on million pounds. He is not leaving Chelsea. Uh, and apparently we have no interest in selling him, which is all good. So we'll move on swiftly from that. And we are going to talk about Maurizio Sarri. Now, obviously, as we were saying, Hazard wants to see what's happening. And apparently, this could be resolved in the next week. So, according to Tutto Sporto, Marina is back in London tomorrow. Uh, she has set three targets to, uh, and made that as part of her agenda uh, during the World Cup and before. First thing is to sort out Conte's departure. Now, obviously, with the amount of talk that's been going on about the manager, I think Conte's known he's been a dead man walking. Uh, and quite frankly... You know, it's something that needs to be resolved before anyone can move further forward. Uh, Chelsea have basically come to the conclusion and basically bowed to it and said, 
yeah, we kind of have to pay the 20 million euro clause we have and pay off the rest of Antonio Conte's contract uh, to get him out the door. And that seems to be the case. So we're just going to get that done. Apparently that's one thing that Marina wants to get done. And then after that, obviously, is to bring in Sadi. Now, according to Sport Italia and GDS, both reporting uh, Sari is set to come in next week. Obviously, this is from Simon Phillips as well. So if you want to see other transfer news, make sure you check out Sai's stuff. Um, but apparently he's also keen on bringing Zielinski, Higuain, Haysaj, Yuzai, sorry, and Kula Bali to Chelsea. Now, obviously... Um, you're not going to get all of them. Let's let's let's, let's be real. Uh, this this is obviously a, a very uh, different scenario to what we're expecting. What I've written down here is to talk about how much bullshit it is, and uh, yeah, that is a lot of bullshit. Uh, for me, obviously, we've there was all the talk about Sadi coming in every week for the past few weeks now. So it's a case for me. I just want to see when it's done. If it is going to happen, just get on with it now. Um, obviously, I think everyone's pretty set on the fact that Antonio Conte is leaving. That is it, really. Um, I'm not going to repeat what I've said. Obviously, what I think about Sadi, I don't. I don't think he's all that. Uh, but look, if he's set to be the next Chelsea manager, as soon as he walks through the door, you've got to back him. Uh, and in my opinion, he is uh, pretty decent at getting that done. But one thing that I have read today, which is according to Calcio Mercato, uh, he is using Gianfranco Zola as a leverage. Now, obviously, if you're a Chelsea fan, uh, obviously what I will say is because I'm back home now as well, I've got this in the background at the minute because currently my room is being used uh, to store everything while work is being done. But in front of me, if you watch previous transfer shows, you'll see that there is a Zola picture there. Uh, now, that Zola shirt obviously is a very uh, significant placement I guess uh, to put to say the least Jack Frank is obviously being for me one of the greatest Chelsea legends of all time as well as many other Chelsea fans apparently Maricho Sari wants to use him as his number two now for me if this was to happen I think it makes great sense now if you look at previous managers we've had obviously to a number two you've had someone who's understood the club and being the joint between that manager the players and the, the club as an entity um We've had Ray Wilkins, God rest his soul, fantastic for Carlo Ancelotti, Gus Hiddink, just basically absolutely amazing for Charles Football Club and a fantastic servant. We've had Steve Holland, we've had Steve Clark, we've had some fantastic number twos along history and uh, Gianfranco Zola I think could fit very well into that role. Now obviously he uh, is Italian, so he'd be able to speak Italian with Sadi, which obviously uh, the language barrier is a big thing for him. Obviously he turned down Zenit because he couldn't learn the language. English is obviously a much simpler language to learn uh, and as someone who does speak a couple of languages it is this most simple language to learn uh, on the entire planet you've not got things like conjugations infinitives um, which get changed and all that kind of stuff masculine feminine now just in terms of latin based languages but so i think obviously this is probably another reason why Saadi chose it he can learn english he can learn it alongside Gianfranco Zola obviously having lived in england for many years now obviously he has a, uh, an ice cream shop in Bromley which was opened a few years back he's now opening one in Fulham and he, uh, he he hopefully by the sound of things he could be coming in as a potential number two alongside Maurizio Sarri now for me I think this would be absolutely fantastic I think that he could definitely be the link between the club and Maurizio Sarri obviously understanding the nature of Chelsea and what it is is a massive thing for for me as a fan uh, and for I think a lot of people this year have felt that there's been a significant cut off between the club and the fans, mainly because John Terry's left. John Terry was a very strong link in terms of trying to maintain that. And quite frankly, I think, you know, to get someone back in who could harness that connection again, I think is something that would help us take a big step to move further forward uh, as a club and hopefully try and remount that top four challenge as well as who knows you know we, we have a tendency to win the league every other year after we've done crap uh, over the past few years so why, why couldn't that happen um, but yeah look, I, th I think that um, and Antonio Conte's departure uh, if Maurizio Sarri comes in with Gianfranco Zola could be absolutely huge uh, for Chelsea uh, obviously this is Calcio Mercato so I'm taking it with a pinch of salt uh, they're not exactly the most trustworthy source I guess is one way to say saying with Gazeta de la Sport um, but look that is that is something that, that could be set to be could be set to be done um, but yeah that is obviously as I said Marina's hit list is to sort out the contract departure contract departure sorry uh, sort out Sari and just pay that 8 million and get it done because she clearly we clearly want him uh, and apparently he could be uh, sorted as close as next week with Zola coming in as his number two. Now, that would be absolutely superb. Uh, moving on to the players that obviously he wants to come in. Obviously, this now links back to Hazard, as I was saying earlier. Uh, Zielitsky, Higuain, 
Yazai and Kula Bali. Is this going to happen? Not a chance in hell. Let's be real. Um, there's a couple of players I could see coming in now. Apparently, Higuain's only valued at about 40 million euros now. He is 31, 32. Is that someone you could build a spine around? No. Is that someone you could see teaching players such as Tammy Abraham uh, to, and maybe even Batshuayi if he stays, to kind of harness a role? Hell yes. Um, look, he's not exactly the. I, for me, I personally don't feel he is that big, big game striker. However, you've seen that flat trap bullies kind of do do a job sometimes. If they get you 15, 20 goals, that's what we kind of need. I think this season, obviously, we've just had problems all across the board. But our biggest issue has been with clubs, which realistically we should have been beating. Crystal Palace, Watford, Bournemouth. Just three examples of players and teams where you know we have really struggled because we've not had that person to finish the chances. Uh, Higuain obviously will take time to settle. He does every single season. Like I've said, as a big bloke myself, obviously I'm bigger than Higuain because uh, he's a professional footballer. But uh, you know he does like to eat and every, he does like to enjoy his summers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone likes to enjoy their summer. I've just been over a barbecue. It's been absolutely superb. Um, but look, you know he 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 is uh, going to need to cut that weight down. Same happened with Costa. Uh, and it, it, it can happen. I mean, you know, he will take time to settle. It's another new league again. Is he very physical? Kind of, I guess. Is he? Can he finish? Can he do it? Yes. He's done it in other leagues. He's done it in La Liga with Real Madrid. He done it for River Plate. Uh, I know which it's the Argentinian league, but you know, he still did it for River Plate. He's done it for Juventus. He's done it for Napoli. He's, you know, he's been superb at, very, at multiple intervals, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see him come back. And if he's only valued at forty million euros, it's a snip. Uh, to get someone you could sign on a two-year deal, maybe, and score some goals for you. It's great, and he is a proven goal scorer. So I'm trying to be a bit more positive with all of this. So it, it could be interesting to see that come in. Zielinski is a player, obviously, uh, which played under Saudi at Empoli. He brought him through, uh, then he took him to Naples with him. Obviously, for me, I think this would be a great signing if we got a hold of Zielinski. Zielinski is that box-to-box midfielder. Absolutely amazing for that kind of stuff. You could partner up with Kante in midfield. You could potentially play Barkley. Loftus Cheek, who's a player who wants to sort out his future, which sometimes we can talk about there. Um, you, know, you, can, you can play at three midfield, which Saudi is so keen on doing. You'll have a big, bulky player in uh, Loftus Cheek, who's very skillful. And then you'd have that box to box player with Zielinski. And obviously, you'll have Ngolo Kante, probably the perfect midfield three uh, in terms of getting a job done. I think that'd be great. For me, if these are the players that you're looking at, that's someone I would definitely target. Yazai is obviously uh, a right back, but uh, if you compare him to someone, someone we'll speak about in our next story, then we can, we'll have that argument afterwards. But Kula Bali, I'm just not even going to talk about because we've been chasing him for years and it's just not going to happen. So we'll just move on from there. Um, but yeah, leave us all your thoughts on Sadi. Um, what do you think is going to happen with that? Do you think Zola being a number two will definitely help him understand the culture of the club uh, and various other entities that are involved in the workings and the processings of getting that done? And do you think that the players that we want or he wants could be done as part of a deal? Leave us your thoughts down in the comment section below. But on to our final story for today. And Gazeta de la Sport are apparently reporting that Chelsea are leading the race to sign Alessandro Florenzi from Roma. Now, um, Florenzi is called uh, Il Capitone Futro. I think that's how you say it, pronounce it. Um, which is captain of the future. Now, obviously, uh, Francesco Totti was uh, Il Capitano, you know, the captain. Uh, de Rossi is another player which has been a so, so one-club man. Uh, uh, so to speak, for Roma, uh, and people are considering in Rome Florenzi to be the next person to take that mantle. But uh, currently, Juventus, Inter Milan, Manchester United, and us are all interested in signing the right back who can also play left back and can play in central midfield. Now, obviously, versatility is something that we love. Look, come on, we love Dave. Dave is a prime example of a versatile player. Can you imagine him and Florenzi, you know, interchanging wing backs? And then you've got further up the field, you've got wingers interchanging. Oh, it's a beautiful thought. It's something which just confuses everybody, even us watching. It'll be absolutely superb. Uh, however, there are two things that I think could potentially be affected here. Now, if you're going to play Florenzi in midfield, uh, it could potentially affect... Ruben Loftus Cheek's chances of furthering his uh, his future at Chelsea. He seems keen to, but a big thing for him is uh, he wants a first team or nothing, or he's at the door. To be honest, fair enough. I think you know Ruben Loftus Cheek has proven this season at Crystal Palace that he's been absolutely superb. He's been um, one of those players which is just a, a strong dribbler and can l- kind of link up the attack from midfield to the front line. 
at the back from the back to the front line. Uh, and I think this is something which which I think makes perfect sense. Uh, bringing in Florenzi for me, I think. Look, the guys had a double ACL. You know that is not good. Your, your knees are very important, and uh, you only get two of them. Uh, and that's why he's been moved into midfield rather than playing at right back because of that double ACL. Uh, he hasn't exactly got the legs to keep doing that, and it could potentially mean, you know, it affects the chance of the players that we have already in the middle of the park. So Renzi would be a fantastic addition. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, this would probably mean Danny Drinkwater or someone going out the door. Bakayoko could probably go on loan. I think. I think that's something that we could consider. However, you have to consider squad rotation. Um, I think Renzi would be a superb addition. I prefer team start as a right back, and I'd like to see Ruben Loftus Cheek potentially come into a midfield. Obviously, we're talking about Zielinski. For me, and I was saying, obviously, Loftus Cheek would be an ideal, maybe number 10 to link it all up with Zielinski and Kante. I'd quite like to see something like that. I think it'd be very interesting to see how that could develop. Obviously, Zielinski going up and down, uh, Loftus Cheek being the link between uh, probably the back line, Zielinski, and the front line, and then obviously Kante doing what Kante does uh, and not going to PSG for 80 million euros. Um, but I think if you brought him in to play at right back, obviously Inter apparently, as well as eyeing up uh, Florenzi, they're eyeing up Zappa Costa. Now Zappa Costa has been dog, I think is fair enough to say, after what I said last time, saying that he could do a decent job for us. He uh, has been absolutely woeful. Um, and I think that Florenzi could potentially replace him. Look, he can play as a wing back as well. If we were to play Karen playing three at the back, if Conte does stay, um, you know, it would work. I think Florenzi is a superb player. I think everyone's, a lot of people are just thinking, oh God, it's another player from Serie A. Yeah, but this is someone which has been linked with clue moves abroad before the Serie A made it big and was in everyone's transfer stories when Conte took over at Chelsea. This is someone who has been linked with moves to Manchester United and Chelsea in the past. Apparently, one almost materialised a few years ago for Manchester United. And uh, I think that Florenzi could be a superb addition at right back. Obviously, uh, for me, what we, you know what we'll do? We'll do, do you know, a couple. Of, if you remember a couple of years ago when me and me and Sammy were doing it, we did a tactics room. We're going to do something similar. We're going to take some of our transfer targets, and what we will do uh, is we will kind of place them into a team and see how the systems work uh, with these various players. Obviously, if you want to see that, drop a like on the video. Let's try and hit. Let's hit a K. I think we could hit a K likes. Why not? Uh, and then obviously uh, make sure you leave all your thoughts in the comment section below about everything. We'll just do one quick round off for everybody to listen to what we're saying about here. Uh, as obviously we said at the beginning, we'll just round off what we said at the end. Uh, Eden Hazard wants clarity over the new Chelsea manager. Apparently PSG a tailed a bid of 80 million for Ingolo Kante, which we're not accepting. Don't worry. Uh, according to Toto Sport, the Marinas back in London has three things set on our agenda. Sorting out Conte's release clause, getting Sadi in the door and making sure that he's happy. We're potentially bringing in Zielinski, Higuain, Yazai and Koulibaly not all of them it'll be a couple of them or one of them uh, and apparently according to Kachi Makato Sari wants Zola as his number two and according to Gazeta della Sport Alessandro Florenzi could potentially be coming to Chelsea with uh, Zappa Costa going out the door and Loftus Cheek aims for first team football but guys that has been your transfer show for today make sure you follow me on my socials well my social currently current follow me on my Instagram at Louis Beneventi uh, I'm still waiting for Twitter to fix my stuff I'm just going to have to go in there I think and you know give me peace of my mind if I can find it where it is but other than that Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your continued support. Let's hit a 1,000 likes on this video. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you very, very soon. Make sure you catch up the transfer show tomorrow with Lawrence. But other than that, guys, take care, and I'll see you very soon.